The Darwinian Snails Lab is about the assumptions behind the theory of natural selection. Using a story of a native snail that is being preyed on by an invasive crab species, students explore how each of three major assumptions affects evolution in the snail population. The flat periwinkle is native to the eastern coast of the U.S. European green crabs invaded the northeast coast within the last hundred years and have been working their way north from Cape Cod up into Nova Scotia. Students start out taking on the role of a green crab. Using the mouse, they click on snails to crush them with a crab's large claw. If I click on this snail, click, I crush it and eat it. Now I'll click on this one, click, and eat that one too. And this one over here, click, 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 click. That one took a lot more claw snaps to crush. Looking closely at the snails, you can see that the light colored snails have thin shells and the dark colored snails have big thick shells making them harder to crush. In the first exercise, students are asked to eat half the snails as dinner. As with all our labs, they reach this and all other exercises by following detailed instructions in a workbook that you'll see in a minute. Students quickly learn to eat the thin-shelled snails, leaving only thick-shelled snails. After they eat their fill, the crabs go home and the snails reproduce clonally, so each daughter has the same shell thickness as its parents. Students perform a couple more rounds of eating and reproducing, and by the end, only thick-shelled snails are left. This shows natural selection in action. Students are then asked to focus on the three assumptions listed on the screen. That there is variability in shell thickness, that this variability is heritable, and that there is selection. They are told to turn each assumption off and predict whether there will still be evolution by natural selection. As an example, if I turn off variability, all the snails have the same shell thickness. Students generally predict the effect this has on evolution correctly. We won't go through the other two assumptions here so as not to divulge answers, but by the end of this exercise, students will see the way in which each assumption is important and also how natural selection is not the only way that evolution takes place. The next short exercise examines the role of mutations in generating variability in snail populations. The final, extension exercise, is a much more open-ended experiment that you can use if you want your students to go through the full scientific process themselves. Prior to describing this setup, students are given some data from research papers and asked to interpret the evidence for natural selection among real flat periwinkles. Then they are shown two areas of coastline, one with crabs and one without. The average snail shell thickness is different in the two areas, and they must do experiments to show this difference is likely due to natural selection. To do that, they have to show that there is variability, heritability, and selection. They can perform many of the standard experiments that a field biologist would do, including mating particular snails with each other, transplanting crabs from one area to another or into a tank, and even adding crabs with its claws rubber banded shut to look for environmental plasticity. Just like all our labs, we have a detailed workbook that takes the students through all the experiments step by step. The workbook also includes an intro to the system and spaces for them to answer questions and make predictions as they are asked to do those things. So although, just as with all our labs, we recommend doing this one in class, it's also very suitable for homework or for an online class where the students are going to be working independently. If you would like to see a sample of this lab or any of our others, go ahead and get in touch with us, and we'll be happy to get you more information on the program in the labs. Thanks very much.